Hi guys, I hope that you're having a fabulous day. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share my pre-loved handbag collection, all of the beauties that I've picked up over the last few years, and share the reasons why I decided to go for them pre-loved instead of brand new. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you do, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get this show on the road, shall we? I have a feeling that today's video might get a little chatty. You know how I am. I can talk until the cows come home. So just a little warning. Okay, so I'm gonna begin with Louis Vuitton because Louis Vuitton is actually the fashion house that um, that I've picked up multiple pre-loved handbags from, whereas the other ones are one in one. Okay, so first up, this beauty. This is the Louis Vuitton Multicolor Petite Noe in the white, and I am a sucker, okay, to the full extent of the word when it comes to multicolor. There is something about the print that, that I'm just like so just infatuated with. Do you guys feel the same way? If you do, let me know in the comment section down below, but Anyways, I'm getting off subject. See what I mean? I told you, this is gonna be a chatty video. Uh, so this guy, I actually picked it up on Fashion File. I wanna say it's probably three or four years ago, something along those lines. And the funny thing is, is that even though I've always loved multicolor, uh, the, the whole bucket bag or the petite no way, I was never really too fond of. I always felt like, the opening, the drawstring was a little too fussy just because I've had backpacks in the past that had this, that had this same type of closure that I was like, dude, I don't wanna deal with that. Uh, so I kind of ju I judged the bag and I remember so many people would say the Petite Noe, the Petite Noe, it's such a great bag and obviously there's different sizes of Petite Noe. Uh, but anywho, I saw this on uh, Fashion File. I think I paid a little under $1,000 if I'm not mistaken and it's one of the best decisions I could have ever made because now not only do I have major appreciation for the whole bucket style, I instantly get in such a great mood whenever I use it just because of the colors. I, I think it's gorgeous. I love how large it is. It's very, it's it's, it's massive in a sense, not really like huge, uh, but it's very comfortable, it's spacious, if it's everything I need and then some, I just, I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great. I don't really move the, it doesn't have, it has one little slip pocket here, it's really hard to see, but you have that stunning red Alcantara lining. Uh, I don't really move this drawstring closure. This is pretty much where I set it at. I know some people have the little slider. I prefer it like this because even like so, when I, I can get in and out of the bag without any problems. So just kind of leave it, you know, the way that it is. Uh, I don't really use these pockets here. Now, one thing to note when it comes to the multicolor, uh, the multicolor white, I think the fact that they paired the red Alcantara lining with the white was one of the worst things they could have ever done because it bleeds through the white. So you will see a lot of these uh, multicolor bags that have this kind of pink, uh, this little pink edging. It depends on, you know, on the, on the bag or what have you, but mostly you'll see it uh, on pockets. I know that the Speedy 30 is like, is known for that, for having that pink or that red kind of seeping through. So obviously with the red and the white, it turns into pink and you have that pink color transfer, that pink bleeding that, you know, some people aren't too fond of. And I'm just like, why didn't they switch it? They should have had, because the black multicolor had the tan, uh, the tan lining. And I'm just like, why wouldn't they just switch it? So that way you don't have any issues about it bleeding through on the white, you know? I love the red. It's gorgeous. It's has that delicious, just vibrant red, but dude, it's deadly, especially with light SLGs. If you have light SLGs and if you put them in here, there's a chance that you will get color transfer because of this, uh, because of this material, because of the richness of this red. So that's the only, that's the only bummer, but I love this bag. I think it's great. Next up is the Louis Vuitton baggy PM in the pink denim. So this bag, um, I have always been a fan of this denim collection. Uh, the green is fabulous. The blue is fabulous. The pink, forget about it. I'm all over it, right? Uh, but they had so many bags come out um, during this collection and I love them all. If I could have them all, I totally would. Uh, the pre-love market has gotten insane when it comes to these uh, denim bags, especially since they release the new uh, the new style of denim for Louis Vuitton. Uh, but 
I was always such a big fan of this. One of my other favorite bags was the Mini Pleaty. The Mini Pleaty in the pink, I just thought, oh my God, the bag is gorgeous, gorgeous. I had the opportunity to, to pick it up for a couple hundred bucks and I totally snoozed on it. I was like, what is wrong with you? Uh, but the baggy PM, I love it. I love the buckles. I like the sound that it makes. There's something about Louis Vuitton bags specifically, in my opinion, that I feel make a certain noise that makes my, makes my heart sing a little bit louder. I don't even know if that makes sense. Saying out loud, I sound, I sound silly. I don't know, but if you feel the same way, let me know in the comment section down below. This one I picked up while we were on vacation at a consignment shop and I got it at such a great price. And usually with this one, I've seen it on the pre-love market, depending on the uh, on the condition, I've seen it for like 1,200, 1,500, 2,100. Uh, so the fact that I got it for what I paid for, I was like, you better get it now, you know? I like the fact that it doesn't have a whole lot of structure. I like the fact that it is baggy. I like the fact that it has a little bit of a sag. I don't use these pockets here. And this guy I will end up using for my phone, but the main compartment, this guy up here, look at how spacious it is. It has a whole lot of bells and whistles and I love it. I love it. Every time I use this bag, I get a lot of compliments and the pink is so vibrant, it's so, I don't know. <laughs> I think uh, I think it's great. And it does have feet along the bottom, but yeah. So the baggy PM. Next up is the Louis Vuitton Trevi PM in the Damien Ben. So this is a bag that every time, okay, every single time that I would walk into the boutique when this bag was available, because it has since been discontinued, I would try it on. I would Put my stuff in here i would walk around with the bag and there were times when i was like you know what i'm gonna go get this bag i'm gonna go get this bag and yet i never pulled the trigger on it never i swear the sales associates were like are you gonna buy the bag or not type of thing because i would sit there for like 20 30 40 minutes like just obsessing about this bag i think it is absolutely gorgeous but i could never i just never i never went for it and when i would see it on people when i would see people do collection videos or reviews on this bag i would just kind of drool like oh i love this bag but again i would never go for it i have no idea why so when i finally made up my mind and i was like okay it is time to bring the trevi pm home it had been discontinued so i went on the pre-love market this guy i also picked up on fashion file and i believe on the listing uh, i don't remember exactly how much i paid for it but on the listing it said it was in very good condition in my opinion uh it was more like an excellent condition especially because with the older louis vuitton damien ben bags Sometimes you will see uh, the color treated leather has some really gnarly wrinkling. Other times you will see some kind of cloudiness over the coating that they put on the bag. And uh, there is none of that on this bag. I think it looks amazing. The canvas is in fantastic condition. I mean, this is built like a tank. It has that really thick, thick canvas that Louis Vuitton was known for. And um, the only thing is that it has some hairline scratches on the, on the hardware. Other than that, this thing is like almost in pristine condition. Now I will admit this bag is quite heavy on its own. And then when I put my stuff inside, it makes it even heavier. But I love the details of it. I know it's not for everybody. Some people think that it's very dated. I don't think so. Uh, it does come with a removable adjustable strap that you can use on your shoulder. I don't use it that way. I just use it for decoration. It has feet along the bottom. It doesn't have any exterior pockets. And then on the interior, it has a very smooth zipper. On the interior, you have that gorgeous, that delicious red interior. It does have one slip pocket and one, one little pocket there, but look at that. I love this bag. And then the last Louis Vuitton bag is this beauty. This is the Montserrat backpack in the GM size. Now I have had this bag before and um, I loved it, I enjoyed it. So I parted ways with it because it had one detail that I wasn't too fond of at the time that I felt to be a little bit fussy and that is the, uh, the drawstring closure. Now, of course, uh, you guys know that this is no longer a deal breaker for me. Uh, but at the time when I had it, I, I loved the bag just because it is so spacious. I used to have the Montserrat in the smallest size as well, a million years ago. And that one, I loved it. I enjoyed it, but I also parted ways with it again because of the drawstring closure. But in my personal opinion, I do prefer the GM Montserrat backpack because the GM is the only one that had the 
the um, that had the uh, the fabric uh, straps, whereas the other two, because it was available in the PM, the MM, and of course the GM, and the PM and the MM have the leather straps, and they were comfortable. They're a little bit on the skinnier side, but I like the thickness of these because regardless of what I'm carrying in this bag, if I'm carrying a little bit more, if I am using it as a travel bag and I have magazines in here, if I have an extra jacket or what have you, it doesn't feel uncomfortable and it doesn't feel like it's digging into my skin because again, these thra these thraps, I put two things together. These straps are so thick, uh, and because they are the the fabric, they're that much more comfortable. So I really like it. I don't really like to use it as a backpack. I like to use it on one shoulder. Other times I will just kind of carry it like so, but I think that this backpack is amazing. I did pick it up at a trunk show from a previous client that I had. She invited me, and um, I saw it there, and I was just like, you know what, let's give this bag another shot. Let's give this bag another shot. I picked it up for, what was it, $5.75, which I thought was a really great price. It's so comfortable. You do have a little bit of an adjustment on the straps here, uh, but you have one little pocket here and here I'll put snacks. Uh, I've used it as a travel bag. I've used it as an everyday bag. I've used it in so many different aspects of my life and it's been, it's been great. It's been absolutely great. And inside you just have one giant compartment, the entire length of the bag. And then you also have one slip pocket there. But I, I love this bag. It's so comfortable. So with this one, I learned my lesson. I don't think it's going anywhere. Nope, I think this one is here to stay. Next up is this beauty. This is the Versace Palazzo Crystal Chain Bag, if I'm not mistaken. It depends the website that you're looking at. Uh, but this guy, I picked it up, I wanna say it was three years ago now, and I picked it up on Fashion File. It actually does come with a removable, adjustable web, like a guitar strap that is beyond hideous. You guys know I don't do guitar straps, so I don't really use it with that. I prefer to use a chain, uh, but I don't remember what I was looking up on Fashion File, and I came across this beauty, and of course, of course, the crystals are what drew me in. I was like, oh my God, it looks like Dorothy's shoes. They're red, it's red. So uh, I, I, I totally was like, okay, this bad boy has to come with me. But it does have leather on the back and it has a little smooth zipper in here. It has one open compartment, one slip pocket. And what I love about this Versace is the fact that this Medusa head is metal because we've discussed this before. There's a lot of new bags that Versace has that the Medusa is plastic. That I am not down with. I don't do plastic, especially when you're paying the amount of money for these luxury goods. I don't think it should have any plastic on it whatsoever. But the fact that it had the the, uh, the metal Medusa I thought was pretty great, but this thing is so shiny, but there is not a single crystal missing, which is sometimes hard to uh, to come by when it comes to the pre-loved uh, crystal bags because sometimes you will see that they're missing like chunks of crystals, uh, but this one is still going strong. But in the sun, oh my gosh, this sun, in the sun that thing is like, Oh, I don't, I don't know, but it makes me very, very happy. Next is this stunning beauty. This is the Celine Trapeze in a small size in the gorgeous Coquelicot red leather color. And I think it is fabulous. I did reveal this, what was it, three or four months ago. I paid under 400 bucks for this bag. And uh, I did pick it up on the Real Real. I was always kind of apprehensive about the Real Real, even though I had purchased from them back in the day. Uh, but this really just made me feel good about, you know, purchasing on that website again. Uh, but I, I love this bag. I remember when this was available at the stores because this bag has since been discontinued. I always loved it. I always thought it was gorgeous. The price point sometimes would put me off because for that price, I was like, oh, I'd rather go for a Louis Vuitton bag, or I'd rather go for a Chanel bag, or what have you. Even though I feel like Celine has some incredible leather, I've said it before, uh, their pebbled leather is amazing, even their suede is amazing. Uh, but I, I had my eye on this bag for a while, and I also wanted to get it in a certain condition. I didn't want to overpay, and because this bag isn't as popular as some of the other Celine bags that have been discontinued, uh, you can find these for some really, really great prices. Uh, so you can really 
really get some savings, but I, I love it. I think it is beautiful. I love the wings that it has. You can tuck in the wings and give it a completely different look. It has a little zipper pocket on the back side. It doesn't have any feet. You can carry it like so, and then you open it up and you have this zipper. Look at how spacious this bag is. It also comes with a removable uh, shoulder strap that is not adjustable. And then the interior does have two little slip pockets. And in the reveal video, I had mentioned that I thought about maybe going to Celine and seeing if maybe they can um, kind of touch up the wings because one wing is a little bit more faded than the other. And many of you guys were like, no, don't do it. Just rock it like so. And um, I uh, I definitely decided to go that route and I'm, I couldn't be happier. I have used this bag so, so much. One thing to know about the trapeze, it's heavy. All right. Even when I was doing research on this bag, many people were like, I love this bag. I think it's beautiful. I think it's this, but it is heavy. Every Almost every video that I watch, people were like, dude, it's really, really heavy. And uh, yeah, it, it is heavy on its own. And I carry a lot of stuff in here, uh, I, but I have used it so, so much. There are times when, and I don't like to use this strap either. I don't like to use this strap. I will leave it at home and I just kind of hand carry it like this. I love the red. The red is perfect, especially with the uh, with the gold hardware. So come on, under 400 bucks in the condition that it's in. And yeah, it has a little bit of fading, but I mean, you, I mean, I can tell, but maybe, I don't know, can you tell? Maybe the, this one's the, the one that's a little bit more faded, <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's a great, great bag. Next is the Chanel Reissue 226 in the Black Age Calfskin with the Age Gold Hardware. So this bag, I decided to go for it on the pre-love market because unfortunately, the reissue doesn't have the best resale value, even though in my opinion, in my eyes, and I might ruffle some feathers and that's definitely not my, my intention. In my eyes, I feel like this is a true Chanel handbag. And I feel like true Chanel fans will appreciate this bag. They either have this bag or a variation of this bag. Uh, not saying that the other, you know, that the other bags that the fashion house has aren't fabulous because they are. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the classic flap, but this one has so so much history that makes me appreciate the bag even more. The 226 is my favorite size because it is so, so generous and it's insanely comfortable. You have so much space. It's not uncomfortable. It's not heavy. I mean, you can jam pack this baby and it's not going to dig into your skin by any means whatsoever. And you have so much more play because of the aged calf skin. And you don't have to worry about, uh, about any type of scratches or anything like that because you do have that aged calf skin that helps to hide any type of scratches that you might end up getting. But I think that this is such a durable material. I, I absolutely love this bag and um, I think it's great. I picked it up on Fashion File. I wanna say it was probably either four or five years ago and I paid four if I'm not mistaken and it was like in pristine condition uh it didn't have any pop stitches it didn't have any scratches it didn't have any gnar like gnarly wear marks or anything along those lines I love 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 the reissue all right moving on I'm almost done I promise moving on to this beauty this is the Fendi Mia tote in the size large so this guy I picked it up from the same client that did the trunk show not on the same day because the, the trunk show was specifically for Louis Vuitton but I had been eyeing the Mia tote for such a long time I went for it on the pre-love market because it has since been discontinued and I love this bag. This is so loud. It is so obnoxious. I love Logomania and I think Fendi does such a great job when it comes to Logomania, but I had been searching, searching everywhere for this bag and I was so happy when I saw that she had it there. My jaw dropped. I was like, oh my god, oh my gosh, you have a Mia, you have a Mia. This one I paid, I want to say it was 700 bucks. I think it was 700 bucks, uh, but Okay, let me give you guys a little quick tour of it. So on the exterior, it doesn't have any pockets. It doesn't have any anything going on, uh, except for all of that gorgeous logo mania. It doesn't have any feet along the bottom. The braiding of the handle. I like the fact that you have a little bit of leather, the patent leather with the chain. And then on the inside, you have two separate compartments, one zippered compartment here. This bag is massive massive but i love it because it gives me it gives me old fendi vibes you know 
Look at this. It is so big. I have you I have used this kind of like a travel bag. I will jam pack this bag and it doesn't feel uncomfortable because this chain or these straps, even though they are pretty heavy, I mean they're not flimsy by any means whatsoever, it is insanely comfortable. And I like the little sound that it makes. That might drive some people nuts, but I I love this bag. Look at that. It is so big, so big, and even though I love mini bags and I appreciate mini bags, there is something about a big bag that makes me so like stupid happy. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> maybe it's because I'm a pack rat and I like to carry everything with me. Someone should call me a turtle. Uh, but there we go. Look at that. Awesome, awesome bag. All right, and the last bag that I wanted to share with you uh, is a bag that I repurchased, uh, what was it, last year, and they have since re brought out a new uh, a new version of it, but to me, the OG was the best, and that is the Marc Jacobs Baby Groovy Satchel and the Black Leather with the Age Gold Hardware. I loved this bag. I had this bag 100 million years ago. I used it to death. That's where my love for Marc Jacobs really started when it came to these bags because the quality of it, the craftsmanship was amazing. And like I said, I would use those bags to death and nothing happened to them. Like nothing, I would use them in the rain and nothing happened to the bags. So, um, they actually re-released the groovy satchel, but I went for the OG. So I paid, what was it, 50 bucks or 40 bucks for this on the pre-love market. And I, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I don't think there's anything wrong with the new ones, but what I loved about the OG groovy satchel was the fact that it had the black and white interior. And I love that. The new version doesn't have that. So I was like, okay, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna reintroduce this bag it back into my collection, it has to have the OG, uh, the OG lining. Now let's uh, do a little handbag tour. So on the front, you have this little, um, this little guy says Mark by Mark Jacobs, standard supply type workwear. And then on the back side, does it have any does it have any pockets? It has four feet along the bottom. You also have these little D-rings on the side because this bag comes with a removable, adjustable strap that you can use as a shorter shoulder strap or as a cross body bag. I don't really like to use it. Uh, and then on the interior, it does have a zippered closure. Uh, on the interior, you have one slip, or one zippered pocket here and two slip pockets on the other side. I think that this bag is absolutely fantastic. But anyways, that does it for this video. That does it for my pre-loved handbags. And when it comes to pre-loved, the question that I get asked most often is where can I get pre-loved goodies? Who can I trust? Uh, what are some companies that uh, that you like to buy from? There are three companies that I have uh, purchased from. The first one being Fashion File. You guys know that I've talked about them often on my channel. I've done many unboxings from them. Uh, I love the fact that they have so many details. They have a lot of pictures on the bag and you can always request more pictures as well. So I think that's great. Uh, another one is Yogi's Closet or Yogi's Closet. I love, love, love Yogi's Closet because they are so insanely detailed when it comes to the condition of the item. They will also tell you the age of the item. Uh, and they have more pictures than any other website, in my opinion. And they're their pictures are a lot more detailed. So you are not gonna be surprised when you open up a package from Yogi's Closet or Yugi's Closet because you're already gonna see it on their pictures on their website and I think that's amazing. Uh, another one that I purchased from is uh, The Real Real. I purchased from them back in the day. Of course, you guys know that I, uh, I purchased from them again with the Celine Trapeze. With them, I'm a little bit, sometimes it's a little bit, I, I don't know, it's a little bit fuzzy just because um, you know, I've seen some things on the website that haven't given me the warm and fuzzies, uh, but they have a huge, huge inventory. And I think that they have the best pricing when it comes to pre-loved goodies as well. But uh, regardless of where you buy them from, I always, always, always recommend to get your items authenticated, even if you are getting them from a reputable uh, seller, it does not matter. Many of these bags I have gotten, you know, double, triple authenticated because peace of mind is very important to me. Um, and I mean, if you can get something authenticated for $20, $30, I think that's better than being out, you know, 500 to 5,000 to $10,000 on a bag that isn't authentic, you know? So to me, adding a little bit extra for that peace of mind is absolutely worth it. Um, and one of the authentication places that I use the most is Real Authentic. 
authentication. They have they have authenticated so many of my items. I love their turnaround time. I've talked about them as well. And this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I'm just sharing information because like I said, I get a lot of questions on that. Uh, on this topic and uh, I will put a link to all of these websites down below and I will put a link to the real authentication as well. Uh, they actually have a code that you can use for five dollars off an authentication and I've said this before full transparency if you use the code you get five dollars off and I get five dollars off but then in return then you get a code that you can share with your friends if you don't want to use my code again you know uh, but again just sharing information you guys know how I roll uh, but yeah I, I love the pre love market because you can find some amazing some amazing pieces on there uh, yes of course let's not let's not forget that lately it seems like the pre love market has gotten a little out of hand some things are like <laughs> overpriced you know they're selling them for over retail which is something that we've discussed before so i'm not going to get into it uh but you can still find some really really great gems on there and i really like the hunt when it comes to pre-loved i really love being you know especially if you have a bag in your mind or if you have an slg in your mind or whatever it is uh that you're looking for when it when it checks off all those marks the condition the year the qual or whatever you know and then when you finally get your hands on it and if you were to get it for a great price it's so exhilarating at least in my opinion i get so pumped up and i feel like i end up enjoying that bag even more so maybe because it took so long to added to the collection or because I got it for such a great price or whatever the case may be, but I get so excited. So I love the pre-love market, you know? And another thing is that if you missed out on it when it was available, the fact that there is a market where you can make your dreams come true of a bag that you missed out on, you know, years ago, and you can find it on the pre-love market, I think that's incredible. It's not like that bag is completely gone, you know? So the fact that you can get those, uh, the, the bag that got away on the pre love market, I think, I think it's amazing. It, I think it's absolutely amazing, you know, because there have been bags that I wasn't able to afford back in the day that I've been able to add to my collection now. And I'm like, yes, yes, I got my hands on it type of thing, you know? And I think that's exciting as well. Do you guys feel the same way? If you do, let me know in the comment section down below. But Anywho, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough of talking off your ear, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Speaking of pre-loved, I have two items that are on their way to me and I will do a reveal when, uh, when they come in and after I get them authenticated and all that good stuff. But I love you guys to the moon and back. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, you'd like to please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys in my next one. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.